Okay, it's Mark here from Talk Beliefs, and as always, Neil from Reason Now. And uh, hey, Neil, our friend Meg is doing really well at the moment. She gave a new talk in Canada about the five most horrible things about being a Jehovah's Witness. Um, she, of course, is an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Yes, and uh, we didn't think there was going to be video at this event, but uh, apparently someone did video it, and you got your hands on it. Yes, it was It was recorded on a phone. Um Let's just put it this way: it wasn't it wasn't the most ideal recording. It was, you know, filmed in portrait. It was a bit shaky. It's um, the sound is a bit off. But uh, I did my best with it. And my friend Ian, who was an audio engineer, he cleaned up the audio a bit. And uh, that is getting ready to go up on Talk Belief soon. And I think it'll be on Meg's own channel first. Uh, she goes by the name Meg Slaymaker, and that is also the name of her YouTube channel. And that'll be going up soon. And uh, I've actually got a little clip from it here where Meg is talking about the problem of Jehovah's Witnesses not accepting blood transfusions. Basically, the reason they have this view is because they view blood as sacred. And they have scriptures that they look at for reasons why they view it that way and why they, they don't accept blood transfusions. But just as typical with all destructive uh, cults, there are reasons for disallowing the life-saving blood transfusions are based on scriptural inaccuracies. So I know you guys are atheists, so you probably don't care much about what, <laughs> what scriptures say in a way, but but it does help to understand um, why they, what what they believe, and then to appeal to them using scripture because they will actually listen better if you can do that. So uh, one point that kind of refutes their whole idea of the no blood is in um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 11. Jesus talked about a um, sheep falling into a pit, and who would not save him, you know, who of you among you would not save the sheep, even if it was on the Sabbath, right? So that principle um, was putting life above the law. So in the case of something like that, life should always precede the law. That's what Jesus was trying to highlight. Whereas the witnesses, you know, they will let people die. Right, so that is coming up soon. We're very proud of Meg, and I do hope to be doing an interview with her soon. She's very, very busy, very much in demand. So um, you know what time of year it is, don't you, Neil? Oh, yes, it's that most wonderful time of the year where evangelical Christians get butt hurt over yeah. Father Christmas. Yes. And atheists enjoying Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm afraid we have to go right into one of those articles. This has come up from metro.co.uk. Kids made to smash chocolate Santas after being told he is made up by Christian charity worker. Pupils as young as four were left in tears after they were told to smash up chocolate Santas after being told Father Christmas isn't real. Children at Fleetwood Lane School were left devastated following an assembly hosted by a volunteer from a Christian charity. Rachel Cotton, head teacher at Fleetwood Lane School in Lincolnshire, has apologized and said that the school wouldn't work with the group again. She denied that pupils were told Santa doesn't exist. However, parents said that it is the conclusion their children came to. The volunteer was from the Mary Bass Charity, which aims to further the religious and other charitable work of the Church of England. Now, I looked that up, the Mary Bass uh, Charity. Now, they are part of the, something called the, the Stewardship Movement, which it sounds actually quite good. <laughs> they believe that that human beings were put on earth to take stewardship over the earth in other words to take care of the earth um, which which sounds fine but then there's all this bullshit as well she allegedly told them he was made up and the reason we celebrate christmas is because of jesus not santa they just can't help themselves can they no. they were then told to smash up their chocolate to show that they understood christmas is more about that than presents and sweets oh well not not a nice lady obviously <laughs> i mean those poor kids enjoying christmas i mean my, most of them would have had a year or two more still believing in santa before uh, they had their illusions but to take shattered. it to, well shattered yes exactly <laughs> good pun but to take it as far as to tell the kids to to smash santa is almost like killing the image of santa i mean that is that's that it, is taking it kind it, of a step too it's far. taken it too far because how would she have reacted if I'm not saying I would do this, by the way. But if I'd gone into a school with a load of um, 
statues of Jesus and Mary and Moses and smashed them so there's no evidence they existed and actually we mm -hmm. celebrate Christmas because it's the harvest time and we've been doing it for thousands upon thousands of years before Jesus existed it is a pagan supposedly holiday. it existed. is a pagan holiday yeah. they would they would have the hump about that right <laughs> royally oh, yes 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 because he's a supernatural figure but then again so is Santa Claus if you think about it yeah so Santa supernatural figure yeah, yeah. Jesus appears, disappears. Exactly. Has a beard. It's just cruel. <laughs> it's just cruel and unnecessary, and it just shows that some of these people's views are so warped that they have to inflict this kind of mental torture on four-year-olds. Yeah, as young as four, it says. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've heard articles like this before, where a Christian will come in, they've got their foot in the door, and then they just run rampant, throwing their own views around. Yeah. Um, and don't forget, at this school. It wouldn't have just been Christian kids in this school. There would have been atheist children, probably Hindus, probably Muslims. Yeah, that's probably. a point. Um, so, what on earth are the school doing letting her, letting her in in the first place to proselytise mm. to kids? I'm glad to see the school isn't going to have welcome this charity back. Mm. But I do hope the kids actually ate the broken pieces because at least there was something came out of it. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Well, at least Santa. It's like you know when you get one of those those sand. They're hollow, aren't they? And yeah, then you, yeah. You crack bits off and you eat the bits. You know, you can't eat. You, you shove a whole one. So yeah, <laughs> some good came out of it in the end. <laughs> yeah, just an example of basically Christians denying the real meaning of Christmas, midwinter solstice festival. Yeah. And um, co-opted by the church round about the, the church fourth and, century AD, I think it was, and being extremely mean to four-year-old children. And when you think when you think of Christmas, you don't think you, you don't immediately think Jesus. And most people will say Santa. They'll think of a tree. They'll think of a present. They'll think of a holly and the ivy and uh, these ancient, you know, yeah, and it's pagan things. And it's a very small percentage of the population think Jesus and go to church good on them they can do what they want they can go to church and enjoy themselves but to try to take away anyone else's meaning of christmas yeah it's, it's rather crap it kind of reminds me of the uh, the good news club have you heard of that <laughs> yes. group uh they go around to schools and it's kind of touted as an after school thing and they have it on school grounds and uh, they basically then indoctrinate children about jesus and uh, they're all sinful and need his yeah. blood and all that that's something uh, I looked into a few years ago. I'm going to have to look into that again. Definitely. Okay, we're going to go on to an article. This was sent to me by Doug in Maryland. He is a friend of the show. This is really interesting. This comes from the nextweb.com. Researchers find a psychological link between conspiracy theories and creationism. It seems kind of obvious, actually. The article says, Ask a three-year-old why they think it's raining, and she may say, Because the flowers are thirsty. Her brother might also tell you that trees have leaves to provide shade for people and animals. These are instances of teleological thinking, the idea that things came into being and exist for a purpose. Teleological explanations for natural phenomena are rejected by scientists because these explanations appeal to intentions. But trees do not grow leaves and rain clouds do not drop water with an outcome in mind. It rains because of physics, and those physics would apply equally if there were no flowers or any other life on the planet. So uh, that is very true. I mean, before we go into this, quite often, I mean, I've catch myself doing it myself. It's like, it's like uh, you know, it's like if it's a really, really windy, rainy day or something, it's like, you know, oh, the weather is out to get me, you know? Yeah, that kind of yeah, thing. yeah. I, 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 our brains are made to think that way, aren't they? I mean, we, we've evolved somehow. We've evolved that the people were most successful in procreating were the ones who saw a purpose in things mm. whether it be i've said before is that grass rustling because there's a line in it it's the ones who stood up stayed up in the trees that's <laughs> I mean, right yeah there might be a line in there i'm not going down <laughs> yeah so if the grass moves there is a there's yeah. a reason that means the lion's coming yeah. to stalk so we you. we've evolved with this thing as everything has to have a reason and it's only yeah it's only in the past few hundred years that we've it's all come to understand, understand that things yeah. don't have to have a reason at all. That's, um, it's and just, this idea of like, if lightning strikes, there might be a fire, mm. which which will burn down your you know your area, or your crops, or something. That could be how the idea of an angry god throwing lightning bolts came around. We tend to personify things and anthropomorphize things where it doesn't exist. So the article goes on to say. 
teleological and conspiratorial thought share a number of features in common. Core to both ways of thinking is the act of giving things a purpose. Flowers supposedly produce delightful perfume in order to attract pollinators, and climate scientists supposedly invent a hoax known as climate change at the behest of the world government. Oh, Origins. George Soros. <laughs> Good old really? fashioned. They do. They always use George Soros. It's or basically, George Soros, yeah. They're the anti-Semites in the group that used George Soros rather than the world government. You can oh. tell the difference between a creationist or, yeah. or a conspiracy theorist who's an anti-Semite and the ones who are not, because the ones who use George Soros are anti-Semites. Okay, I see. <laughs> basically. Well, no, this is, this is really interesting to me. One, because it's not completely correct. <laughs> But that's not the point of this story, because actually it says up here that trees do not grow leaves, and rails do not go, uh, and, and rain clouds do not rain water. It's just science, blah blah blah. And they've actually proven in the Amazon that trees do actually release particles in the air to create their own rain. Wow, <laughs> it's incredible. Check it out. I think it's um, it's okay to be smart. Did a video about it recently. It's amazing stuff because. Mm. Are you sure? Are you sure it just doesn't no, seem that way? No, no, they do. When when their when their water's low um, in their roots, they release um, particles into the air, mm. and what happens is those particles, uh, water molecules, gather around those particles and to create rain. Oh my lord! It's just incredible. But that doesn't mean that's their purpose. No, this like this like what it says here. Flowers supposedly produce perfume in order to attract pollinators. It would seem that way. But it's evolved so that uh, the perfumes that it does release happens to yeah. attract and the, and the animal that it's attracting has evolved at the same time. And they're more the successful ecosystem. and in reproducing. And this applies, of course, to, to uh, animals as well. And then that trait gets passed on. That's right. The new study from the University of Freiburg, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, published in Current Biology, provides evidence that links teleological thinking, conspiracy theories, and the rejection of scientific facts about evolution. Perhaps more than any other well-established scientific finding, evolution has been in constant combat with misperceptions arising from teleological thinking. In fact, teleological reasoning is so pervasive that there is much evidence that it impairs people's ability to learn the concept of natural selection in the first place. I would agree with that. <laughs> it is tempting to think that giraffes need long necks to reach leaves at the top of the trees, and so evolution provided them with those long necks. This teleological notion is in conflict with the fact that natural selection has no such goal in mind. There was natural variation in the population, and those animals with longer necks had greater reproductive success in an environment with tall trees. So the giraffe evolved, and longer necks became standard. So yeah, that's that's again. Um, it looks like in the case of the giraffes that they were almost trying to evolve longer necks. Yes, yes. It, it it isn't a case like that at all. It's just the ones with the slightly longer necks fed well. Yeah. survived more Brent, um, yeah that's the way it always works so it goes on to say but the researchers have also shown a strong association between creationism and conspiracism mm. people who have believed in creationism also tend to believe in conspiracy theories regardless of their religious or political beliefs conspiracism was also associated with theological thinking well um, we're not too surprised are we really so I mean it's important paper this because mm. This needs to be recognised. It's something we need to bring in at a very early level to teach yeah. kids that things don't have a reason and to keep their critical thinking going. So, yeah. We need a reason and a purpose. So, therefore, everything else does. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it, it is, it's in us and it's natural for us to feel that way. But as soon as kids start saying things like, yeah, it's raining because the flowers are thirsty, mm. we need to start counteracting that and trying to explain some things don't have a reason. And if people are wondering why is there this uh, link between conspiracism and creationism, well, if you've talked to as many creationists as I have, you'll know that they are very conspiratorial in their thinking. Um, scientists are literally conspiring to defeat God or to deny God. Anything from you know, faking fossils to creating hominid skulls out of, you know, and fake bone, planting them. Yeah, theological thinking is not down split down religious lines yeah. there's plenty of atheists out there who have some batshit crazy <laughs> conspiracy theories yeah unfortunately they believe in i mean crop circles mm. climate change 
denial. There's many, many things. I mean, some of the funniest ones I see is people who put videos up on up on video, YouTube of UFOs. Now, anyone who's got a security camera, I've got a security camera, at any time of day or night, you could look at it and there'll be a bug flying in front of it at some stage. Yeah. And what happens when it goes in front of it? Because of the frame rate so quick, it looks like an elongated tube. And there's all these people it saying, yeah. yeah, all these people saying we've been visited, visited by aliens when it's just a bug flying in front of the screen. Yeah, you have to you have to employ critical thinking and not just immediately jump on it and then, you know, it's this unusual thing. And why why on earth is the people jump to the most impossible conclusion because it's more exciting first. it's more exciting and then they can spread it amongst their friends and yeah. ha see their friends you know s spread it amongst their friends but what's more likely a, a, a cigar shaped spaceship has traveled light years to get here to talk to whales <laughs> yeah <laughs> Star Trek reference uh flown across the flown across no one else saw it no one else had contact with it. You're a security apart from camera. Your security <laughs> camera. <laughs> What's the most likely thing? You yeah. have a supernatural security camera that can get It's more exciting. <laughs> it, yeah, and it is to me too. It'd be more exciting if it was real. But uh, every time I've looked into this, it's been exactly what you said, unfortunately. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, but anyway, I like I like this. I like this document a lot. Theological yeah. thinking. I Thank you, be, Doug, for sending it to us. I will be bringing this up with people <laughs> for sure. Because I deal with these on reason, now you deal with them on talk beliefs. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, something we're going to be dealing with uh, quite a lot for this month is this war and Christmas nonsense. And uh, you saw the uh, the um, the tweets from Fox News' Sean Hannity, did you? Yeah, he seems to be going down the uh, <laughs> Trump full caps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Full caps. That is another um, indicator of a conspiratorial sort of Must mindset. be true. They put full caps on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout it from the rooftops. This is from the Huffington Post. Twitter users mock Hannity's panicky new war on Christmas rant. Now, uh, the actual the actual tweet. Now, what do you want to read out these tweets? This is, this is interesting. Okay, so Sean Hannity tweeted out, on hashtag Hannity now, Christmas under siege. A Massachusetts church puts baby Jesus in a cage to make a political statement. Watch now. <laughs> and there were all sorts of uh, responses to that. Um, one of the best ones is, uh, I think you should read out that as well. So someone who calls himself Dr. Bad Wolf uh, <laughs> replied, so the church is doing more on Christmas by reminding us that Jesus was a refugee an immigrant and an asylum seeker in his life. You remember the what you did for the least of my people line, right? Uh, to be honest, seems like you're in a war on Christ more than anything else. Uh -huh. whether, now, whether he or any of these other um, you know, war on Christmas uh, types read these and, and, and take anything from them, I don't know. But uh, is Christmas being taken away from anybody, these evangelicals? The way that they talk, it's as though a SWAT team comes into their, their front garden and takes away the nativity scene and says, you've got to say happy holidays, you can't mention Christ. This doesn't happen. It no, doesn't happen. No, they're just, I don't know, they're just butt hurt, aren't they? Trying to manufacture rage. Well, the Fox are very good at trying to manufacture rage. But, I mean, this is a great reply because... That's the best Yeah. <laughs> who, Who is doing more to take away the real meaning of christmas if you're a if you're a christian obviously because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not what we believe but if you're a christian and believe that jesus is the meaning of christmas yeah or even if you're anyone else who believes that jesus is the meaning of christmas how can pointing out that jesus was a refugee and an immigrant mm. and the way your country is treating refugees and yeah how exactly. can that be taken away that is literally selling the message of the jesus story mm. <laughs> so i think it's hannity's actually done his war on jesus he's right absolutely and uh, they keep going on about jesus so they don't really know enough about him and uh, i mean he was he was this homeless itinerant guy you know the, exactly the sort of person which i suspect maybe hannity and his family might reject if he turned up on their doorstep hate um if they were trying to get across the border right now they might fire tear gas at them that's a point yeah or, uh... <laughs> and jesus and his disciples like getting tear gas they're, yeah. yeah go away go away yeah and they're brown as well we so they wouldn't like that at least we wouldn't have this story still pervading today <laughs> <laughs> 
So I think, Neil, okay, as we wrap things up, I think this is just the beginning of the war on Christmas because it happens every year. And as I'm sure you'll agree, the war is instigated by these people who say that there is a war on Christmas. There isn't actually a war on Christmas. There isn't a war on Christmas. Christmas is whatever you want to make of it. Yeah. So right. any slight tweak to it, oh, no, our privilege is being taken away. No, it isn't. Grow up. Indeed. And no matter Merry Christmas, what faith everyone. you are, Merry Christmas, <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, Season's greetings, yeah. Merry Xmas. This might be the last show before Christmas. No, I think we might squeeze another one in. Hopefully we'll squeeze another one. Yeah. On that note, I will see you next week.